very few sunnahs in my life, then don't stay in the darkness of your other actions. Fulfill this big gap. What does the Quran say? To attain hidayah, first thing we have to do, dhikr Allah. Do dhikr Allah, and then you will plug the gap. So in that position, we should accept Allah Ta'ala's dhikr. We should do Allah Ta'ala's dhikr, His remembrance. That's it. Consider that I am a marid. I am ill, and if I don't have the courage, determination, or strength, obviously the person who's sick, he doesn't have the strength, all his cell, battery, cells, his power has gone down, his energy has gone down, machinery has gone down, re- recharging has gone down. As soon as you speak about the sunnah, he starts to sweat. When you explain about the sunnah action, the person's his hands start to shake. He leaves that place, he doesn't want to hear. He said, what is this waste of time discussion? How can this be part of the deen? This is not Islam. And to testify with him, the whole of the generation society will stand with him. But, alhamdulillah, but alhamdulillah, Allah Ta'ala says that as long as the Qur'an is here, the doors and the paths to Hidayah will be open. And if the Qur'an will continue until when? Qiyamah. We have Qur'an. So the first point that we've been taught, the first point, dhikr Allah. If we feel there's weakness, and we know the mirror for weakness, what is that? Ittiba, imitation of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, where we get the hukum to do ittiba, and the time has come for us to practice, and it's time for us, and we leave it, and we present our references and excuses, I'm this, I don't have to do this, this is not necessary, this is not essential. No reference, there's only one reference, then it's deception. You're deceiving your life, you're deceiving yourself. When you seek excuses, not to practice sunnah. So what should we do? Go to a wali of Allah, true shaykh, learn dhikr, who is saying this? As a hakim al ummat his great khalifa, Hazrat Dr. Abdul Hayy, rahmatullah alayhi. The do dhikr of Allah, and this is his qawl, and the, the, you will plug the gap and you will practice the sunnah. Look at this point. So we understand one thing about hidayah, this is the summary, if we want to attain hidayah. What's the first thing? Dhikr Allah. Dhikr Allah. Now the second ajib thing, my brothers, that's what occurs, isn't it? So Allah is close to us. So we have become far from Allah. We have gone far from Allah. We have left Allah. So what do we need to do? That we need to get close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We need to get close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What is the methodology for that? Well, first was dhikr Allah to plug the gap of the sunnah. And secondly, Allah Ta'ala says, I'll give you the second method. And that's in the second set of three verses in Surah Al-Fatiha. Verses 4, 5 and 6. اِيَّكَ نَعْبُدُ وَإِيَّكَ سِرَاطَ الَّذِينَ أَنَمْتَ عَلَيْهِمْ غَيْرِ الْمَغْضُوبِ عَلَيْهِمْ وَلَا الضَّالِينَ This is verses 4, 5 and 6. What is Allah saying here? That in these three verses, Allah says, there's one message emanating. إِيَّكَ نَعْبُدُ وَيَكَ نَسْتَنِ إِهْدِنَ الصِّرَاطَ الْمُسْتَنِ What is this? These old du'as and kalamat. Du'as. Prayers. First was what? Hamd and Sana. Praising Allah. Dhikr Allah. Remembering Allah. And second verse, set of verses is du'a. Prayer. Supplication. This is it. This is the action that we're missing to attain hidayah. That to get hidayah, what's the second action? Dua. Prayer. Prayer to Allah. Why? Because in that person whose heart, he doesn't have the jazbah for hidayah, who doesn't want hidayah, he won't do dua for that. When will he say, Allah, allow me to practice the sunnah, give me the imitation of the Prophet ﷺ? His ideology will be, oh, it's not necessary. I don't need this. Why do I need to do dua? The person in his mind, in his brain, he doesn't have ahmiyat, importance to sunnah, then what dua will he make? He doesn't accept that he needs to practice something or have something, then he won't ask for it. And how important is dua? How important is dua? That what is the link of dua to our lives? Listen to this carefully. In the whole Quran, Allah Ta'ala says that this is the means to my hidayah, dua, prayer, dua. And hidayah, the means to Allah Ta'ala's guidance is dua, prayer. And we have a big void in our lives, very seldom and Few and far between do we do dua. There's such a small link we have with Allah. And dua is such an action that it's such an excellent link. Allah Ta'ala has created dua that nothing else creates that link except for dua. Nothing else creates such a strong link. When we do dua after the fard salah, who are we asking dua from? Who? Allah. From Allah. We have yaqeen, isn't it? That Allah is there. We know Allah is listening. We know Allah Ta'ala will give to us. So tell me then, how can we get to... Clo- what more... And you're turning side to side. When your eye is open, when you turn side to side, you say, Allah, please allow me to turn side to side easily so I can see a nice dream. And I don't get disturbed. Such a deep link with Allah, our Rabb. The insan and Hazrat said this, that this is such a great link, number one. That all our Messiah, all our problems and issues and obstacles, every second, if we keep on speaking to Allah through the day, keep on asking from Allah, discussing with Allah, having a dialogue with Allah, then the question doesn't arise that that human being will have problems. Does it? 
What a beautiful point we've just learned. Think about it. And this is the summary of the whole Qur'an. What? Allah Ta'ala says, do my dhikr and ask from me. I am your Rabb, your Lord. When these two things come into your life, then what human being will they be who says that I am not close to Allah? Who will they be in the world? That person can never stay far from Allah who is asking and Allah is giving. That so qareeb will become the relationship that you are asking and Allah is giving. You are asking and Allah is giving. You are the one who is allowing me to write with this pen. Allow me to write probably. You're going to your shop. Allah, I'm going to my shop. Allah, I've got a lot of bad stock. Allah, protect my business so my stock is sold and I don't have a debt on my head and I can come back and count the, the takings nicely. Our hands, they shake. Our face, our mouths, our lips. We can't make these smooth. Who makes them smooth? Allah, la hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. There's nobody who has power except Allah. Am I right or am I wrong, my friends? So this is the message method of get close to Allah. Whichever chilla are we going to do to get close to Allah? Tell me. Whatever striving or effort, you have to go and leave the town, go to the jungle or hang upside down from a mountain branch to get close to Allah. Allah says, why are you going to such extremities? Allah says, attain my qurb so much that I will feed you, I'll give you sweet and uh, delicacies and you'll get close to me as well at the same time. So one part of our life, which is ibadah, worship, and just it's five or ten minutes going to the masjid. That's it. We have the permission to pray for in the masjid. That's it. That's it. We don't have permission, go to the masjid, do wudu, and have a bath in the masjid, and have a ghusl, and waste time. No, this is totally wrong. Using the resources of the masjid is incorrect. Do wudu at home, prepare for salah, have a bath at home. This masjid, the wudu in the masjid, this for a musafir, a journeyman, a traveler. It is not permissible to utilize the resources of the masjid. Ask the ulema. This is the house of Allah. This is the house of Allah. And on every two footsteps that we see that person, for example, he's doing wrong. And we see the person, he lives just two, three yards from the masjid, a few footsteps from the masjid. And he's leaving home, pulling up his cuffs and uh, uh, his sleeves to do wudu at the masjid. Why? You have at home, you have the uh, water and you have hot water. And you want to utilize the masjid's hot water and resources? The masjid is for the musafir, the wudu area, for the people who are coming from far and wide. So never go to the masjid if you live close to the masjid. A few footsteps away, a few yards away. If the sunnahs come into your life, then you have understanding that how should I go to the masjid? How should I sit in the masjid? How should I practice the masjid? And the masjid gives us a teaching of five minutes deen, ten minutes deen. Pray for it. That's it. Five, ten minutes, leave the masjid. Go and pray in nafil at home, sunnah at home. Switch the lights off in the masjid. This is the house of Allah. Save the money. Save the money. They said, do you understand what I'm saying? So brothers, this is 10 minutes of deen in the masjid. The rest of the day and night is out of the masjid. So if you are a tajir, a businessman, if you're leaving, you're promising somebody, you love somebody, or you've got a relationship with somebody, or create a link with somebody, all of this deen is outside of the masjid. And it's a high form of ibadah. He says that here, I used to think that the enjoyment, enjoyment, uh, to attain Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to feel the peace. It's too difficult, he said. And his couple, I can't remember that, his uh, verses now. He said, I thought that it's very difficult for me to open up and get to Allah ta'ala and to follow the path to get to Allah. He said, his, his, his verses that he wrote, the poems are very famous. He said, I thought I had to do this and I had to do this and this action. I was afraid and scared. How will I get close to Allah? How will I attain Allah's nearness? But he said, subhanallah. When I attained Allah ta'ala, Hazrat Sobat, then I didn't see anything easier than this. The whole deen became easy for me. Subhanallah, such a beautiful couplet poem, it's not coming to my mind. He said, my whole deen became easy. That what a great personality, that he's made my deen so easy for me. And I thought it was hard. I thought it was difficult. The walis of Allah, Allah Ta'ala has kept such an effect in the company of the wali of Allah. So the same way a person goes in isolation, wazifa chilla. My friends, three words of the shaykh will tell us, one kalama will tell us, according to our capacity, he will become your dhikr, he will teach you and the...